Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. I see these things at ham fests all the time, and I'm always looking for one that has HDMI output so I can zoom in and share things with you folks at home. This looks like it's gonna be a winner. Let's get over to the bench, see what's in the box, figure out how to make this thing work. The Digital Microscope Product Application. Professional Electronic Products. All right. Let's take a look inside, which it's a big box, so it's going to be kind of interesting. I'll, I'll show you things as they come out. This is the user's manual. Manuel. Manuel. Interesting. All right, I figure we will learn as we go. That's how this stuff kind of works. Components list. But we'll see all that as we open the box. USB, USB, and power. And this is on and brightness controls. And we have a screen. Looks like this is integral with the microscope. There's an SD card slot, a USB, and a looks like a mini HDMI port. Remote control. And this is very well packed inside the box. This looks like a lens protector. Like some more lenses to go in and a nice little case to store them in. 32 gig SD card for you. We have some tools. Oh, and they even have some sample things to look at. That's pretty cool. Pine stem. Oh, this is gonna be some cool stuff to check out. Musca Domestica compound eye loading, pine stem. Oh, put that back in the holder wrong. It's actually very easy to get these things into the holder wrong. Epidermis of onion. Sounds kind of gross when you say it that way. Honeybee wing, honeybee worker leg. That's pretty big. I hope no honeybees were harmed in the making of this product. A little slide holder, a USB-A to micro USB adapter. I guess those are hold downs. We'll see as we get farther in. This is a light, I think. The arm, the, the, this is the out arm, this is the up arm. Micro HDMI to regular HDMI adapter. And then our base with our two lights on it. All right, I'm gonna figure out how this thing all goes together. They gave us some extra knobs here to be able to replace if we need to. We have a up down adjustment here. All right, now I gotta figure out what's inside this thing. Looks like a light of some kind, but I don't see any way to turn it on or to power it. It's definitely a light. Ah, okay, so it's got some power through there. Okay, so it is a light that pops out of the bottom there and there is some power there. Okay, lights work. Screen comes on, it says, welcome, how nice. Okay, so the workbench lights have brightness controls. That's nice. All right, let's get rearranged for some beauty shots and then we will do some screen sharing. All right, I found out what that thing was. It's a slide holder that shoots light up into the microscope lens and check that out. We'll do something better on screen, but I just wanted to show you this thing all set up in its, in its glory and having, and having it magnify something for you. I think it looks pretty good. And that screen's not too bad either. All right, this is where this becomes really interesting. If you have an HDMI output, you have an HDMI input. If you have an HDMI input, you can capture it. I will leave a link in the description down below for my capture device, but we are looking at an STM32. This is attached to an MMDVM hotspot, and that's a dusty screen. And there's the inside of the SMA connector. Let's do some, some zoom focus adjust stuff. Oh, look at that. You can look at the top of the SMA connector, or you can look down inside the SMA connector. And this, of course, is attached to a Raspberry Pi. Now my focal distance has changed. Let's zoom again. There we go. FCC ID to ABCB dash r pi 4 b and ce certification made in the uk camera connector that is the it's one of the mini hdmi connectors it looks huge on the screen it's 
some unlabeled capacitors. This thing looks pretty good. Diode D13U. Man, this thing's dusty. There's another chip. Looks like a BGA. Nice. Okay, let's get back out to that STM32 because I want to show you something. That's not it. That's it. Okay, let's get the focus right. Okay, that looks really good on the screen. Okay, now what I saw was there's a couple of flux balls just hanging out there. Overall, the soldering doesn't look too bad, but here's where it gets interesting. Let me show you something. This right here, where is it? This is the tip of my soldering iron. And this is a relatively average size tip, but this is where it gets to be an interesting trick. The soldering iron turned off. I'm not gonna hurt anything, but like right there, touching that last pin, Yeah, wow. And you get a nice fine tip on your soldering iron so you can do some fine detail work. And you have to get your workstation set up just right. But that's what she looks like when you're doing some micro soldering. Hi everybody. So this is the distance that you have from the lens to the work surface. That's not bad at all. I feel like I can work in there pretty good. And you would be staring right into the screen directly above. And there is your work surface. And you've got two lights, one on each side, so you can get some good focus on your lights. And the reason why the screen is off is because you can't run the internal screen at the same time you run the HDMI output. So let's switch back to the internal screen. And this is me recording the screen through the camera. And that's not, that's not a bad screen at all. I mean, you can see some good detail on that screen. And so if I stuck my finger in there, <laughs> that's my huge finger. Good thing I cleaned my fingernails before I started this project. But that's gonna be interesting to work on. A couple of these buttons down here on the front allows you to take a picture and to start recording, and it will record to the internal SD card for you. So you can see the video camera option there. It's got five hours of storage left, it looks like. And I gotta figure out what that Wi-Fi is for, because that might be interesting. Okay, folks, me and my new best friend here, there is a Wi-Fi thing showing up here in the corner, but I don't see how it'll work. Uh, it doesn't show anything in the manual at all, so maybe it's something they'll do in a future firmware upgrade. It is supported by Windows with some Windows software, but I was able to use it with an HDMI capture card. You can get this to work over USB. You can run the included software, which has some measurement features. The HDMI output is actually 2K resolution. So imagine having this thing be on like a 32 inch screen, a 28 inch screen, a 24 inch screen, a 42 inch screen at uh, 2560 by something resolution. The camera files that it takes the pictures with, uh, they're stored at 24 megapixels, I think it is, which is not bad, but that's like 5,000 pixels by something. Let me look at the manual real quick. Yeah, so looking at the manual, the image resolution is 24 megapixels, which is 5,600 by 4,200 resolution, which is pretty big. The, the working distance seems like it's okay. You've got three different lenses. It has applications to look at like scientific slides, as well as doing circuit board stuff like I might be interested in using it for. There will be links in the description down below where you can get this microscope and also the HDMI capture card that I have used with it because it doesn't come with one. It's really meant to go out to a screen, a bigger screen than this one here. I would like it if it did both so I could like work over here and then also have it recording for you guys at home, but it's better than no microscope at all for doing surface mount work. So we will continue down the blazing path of using technology in all of its glory. There is a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.